Hi, good morning. What are the questions to ask about a company before you invest? Actually, even after you have invested, this is a good set of questions to keep asking on an annual basis. This is going to be a longish video, so please be prepared for a 7, 8 minute, 10 minute kind of a talk rather than a 3, 4 minute, which I normally do. So what are the things that you have to ask and what are the questions which people don't ask and which really shocks me and therefore I made this list. First, ask what business is the company in. Some businesses are easy to understand. Kajaria makes tiles, Colgate makes toothpaste. Uh, but it is not so easy to find out what business Reliance is in. So if you don't understand what business the company is in, from where the cash flows are coming, is it an oil company, is it a telecom company, is it a retail business and will it make money? If you don't, if you can't answer those questions, avoid those companies. Those balance sheets are more difficult to understand. It's easy to understand when Ultratech, what does it do? Make cement. It's simple, right? Even banking is not very easy to understand. For example, HDFC Bank does not own HDFC Mutual Fund or HDFC Insurance, but it owns HDFC Securities. Uh, ICICI Bank on the other hand is the biggest entity in the ICICI group. It is the owner of ICICI uh, General Insurance, Life Insurance, AMC and uh, holding company for ICICI Securities which is a listed company. So right. So comparing HGFC and ICICI also you need to understand uh, the sum of parts is more difficult to understand in ICICI than in HGFC. This is just giving you as an example. So first thing is what business is the company in? Is it run well? Is it competitive? Nothing. But first at least write down what business the company is in. What is the company's dividend paying policy? Please understand when you buy a PSU share, the PSU itself may not want to pay too much of dividend but the owner, bank uh, owner which is the government is a rogue promoter and whenever he wants dividend or whenever he wants money to put it be given even to charity they force the companies the PSU companies to pay out cash right so you need to understand is it a good policy of the company to pay out dividends even when there is no profit and they are uh, being forced to borrow right that's very important to know the dividend payout policy some of them have a stated policy that we will pay 30% of our income or we will pay 80% of our income, whatever. You need to know what they pay. Historically, have they stuck to what they have said, right? So when you are looking at the balance sheet, look at last 5 years balance sheet at least and see, read the director's statement and see what they are saying. What, what business are they doing, what geographies they are growing, what is the feedback, if they have entered South America, what is the problem, if they have entered Africa, what is the problem. See whether they are talking about it now because five years ago they were very, they were gung-ho about Africa, today they are not talking about it. See how much money is stuck there, right. So that's important to know what they are saying and what they are doing, are they being consistent. Who runs the company? Is it professionally run? Is it run by the family or is it an MNC? I was just doing this check on my portfolio and I find that my portfolio is full of companies which are run either, either MNC or they are run by family or there are some professionals who really run it very well and you don't even realize that they are not uh, the promoters, they are just employees. I mean uh, the name which comes to mind first is Deepak Parikh. The way Mr. Parikh has run the GFC group is amazing and he's uh, let's face it, he's just an employee, not a promoter, he's not the owner, right? So very rare to see such things. But largely my portfolio is full of family run. I mean, I travel Supreme and the Cholamangalam, Moragupa group, uh, Koromandal, rather than so-called professionally run but badly run companies. Consistently looking at a balance sheet for 2-3 times, you realize whether the balance sheet is trustworthy. See whether it is sitting on excessive cash. If a company is sitting on excessive cash, try finding some vendors and see whether they are paid on time. If a company is supposedly sitting on cash 
and it is denying payments to its vendors and or delaying it by you know they say seven days and they pay in ninety days. It's a great proof that the cash may not be there. It may be there only in the books of accounts. It may actually be missing. So cash is uh, many times falsely shown to be too high, which may not be true. Uh, Satyam is the first case that comes to mind that the company did not have that kind of cash. The profitability, everything was a question mark, right? So yes, that could be an issue. Check out whether they are uh, what they are saying. Are they really having that much of cash? And how is it evidence? Is it shown as cash in the bank, or is it evidence in terms of liquid funds, etc.? You cannot create a fake liquid fund uh, certificate. So then, yes, they are sitting on cash. But yeah, just check out that. Check out the competitiveness in the market. You cannot come back with the feeling that Berger Paints is a very good company when you are doing the analysis of Asian Paints. I am not saying Asian Paints is not a good company, but when you look at Asian Paints, you will also look at their competitors, see who is doing well, and you realize that Berger Paints is as good as Asian Paints, if not better. In fact, I have more Berger Paints than I have Asian Paints in my portfolio. So that's that's perfectly all right. So look at the competition, see who is doing well. That's very important. Any red flags that you saw recently? Any kind of a prosecution, uh, directors being prosecuted? Any Me Too cases? Please remember, our press is very, very uh, choosy in what to publish. So when you see a news item, and if you see a question mark, don't believe it. It is just pure speculation. It could have been planted by the competition. So be careful to analyze the news items. Watching TV to find out about a company is not a great idea. We do not have very uh, deep interviews of management. The management chooses to come or chooses not to come. There is nothing very detailed analysis happening, at least not in the commercial uh, space. So don't believe or trust that. That's not enough. That's good for fun, but that's not enough for you to base your judgment on. Maybe it's a trading call, and maybe it's a trading call when somebody wants to sell. They are asking you to buy. Free stuff is never free. In fact, free uh, gyan given by anybody is normally the most expensive. Thank you.